Let's really praise him in this place. Let's really praise him right now. Praise his wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless. Take a moment and just praise and clap your hands and just say that song is my heart today, Jesus. Praise your name. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. Bless his wonderful name. Wow, what a song, right? What a what a what a message. That says exactly all of our story of what Christ has done for us. Where would you be? I'll tell you where you would be. He saved your life. He saved your life. One more time in honor of that precious blood. Give a praise unto God. Clap your hands at all of our campuses, even those of you streaming live just clap your hands and praise the lord it's what the bible said dude it said clap your hands and shout unto god with the voice of triumph to god be the glory wonderful 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 smile at someone around you and say that was my song right there and tell them you're glad they're in the church today I am so excited about what God is doing. And while you open your Bibles with me to 2 Kings chapter 3, go with me to 2 Kings chapter 3. I, uh, I want today to share something that I think is so important. I believe God is up to something powerful in this church. It just feels like we're on the brink of something great. And I, uh, I'm excited about the five o'clock service once a month, the first Sunday of every month. I felt impressed to have a praise and worship and prayer meeting for this church. And we have been gathering and it has been glorious. And tonight will be no exception. At five o'clock, I'm going to be here our team is going to be here. Our campuses at every campus will be doing this. And it's going to be heaven on earth. And I'll tell you what I believe God is going to do. Is he's going to, to create the atmosphere through our praise and prayer. We fasted for 21 days. How many of you enjoyed eating this week? Let me see your hand. Yeah. It never tasted better, did it? Sharice and I were in Buford. We went out to eat and we were riding home and just like magic, that, that light came on Krispy Kreme. It just lit up and I said, if, if God ever gave a sign, that's the sign. And we whirled in and boy, I'm telling you, we were like a, like a pack of wild dogs when we got a hold of, just ripped into those donuts. They were so good, melted in your mouth. Uh, every one of you going to be over there before the day's over. I can see it on your face. And uh, it, was, it, was so, it was so good. And, and, and this church is being poised for something. I, I don't just say things like this. We don't have to prove anything to anybody. But you know if you have been attending this church, something's happening in all of us. We've been broken. We've been through crisis. We've been through trials. Families are under attack. Marriages are under attack. But thanks be unto God that always gives us the victory in every place. And when the church begins to fast and begins to pray, look out. Look out. Miracles are going to happen. And tonight, as we pray and worship, we're going to worship. It's going to be glorious. Do not miss it. Whatever you have to do, get here. Giving God that time is exactly what I'm going to preach on this morning. Why it's so critical, what we're doing even here this morning. I want you to look with me in 2 Kings chapter 3. While you're turning there, they gave me a list of things that I should tell you that you made happen in the month of December. We sent $100,000 to help 
Haiti with the recent earthquake. Our missionaries called us and said it's desperate. We were able to send them a hundred thousand dollar money order over there that put the money on the ground immediately. On top of that, 120,000 meals per month that we do anyhow. And on top of that, gangs are prevalent. People have lost homes. They're living in tents. But we were able to feed and, and sending emergency medical assistance was able to be performed because of those resources. Thank you, Free Chapel. Secondly, this month, in just a few days... They're going to dedicate. I will not get to be there. I was invited, but I cannot go. But I, this is in Israel. This is our play, our play, our kingdom play school. It's complete. It's the fourth and final. Uh, there it is. That's the play kingdom. It is a, it's fortified walls so that that's in a war zone in Israel, right on the Gaza Strip. And you and I and the Jewish National Fund, we matched, did a matching fund. And that building will be dedicated and full of those children. Isn't that beautiful? And then on top of that, last year, 2021, we are now completing all the way through. We were building bomb shelters. There's a picture of those bomb shelters where people run, the elders and so on. They take them. There's food, there's supplies to stay in there for days. It's deep down. It's a bomb shelter. It could even potentially take a hit if it had to. And they believe that people would be uh, safe there because of the shelter. And that is an amazing thing. And you made that happen. Those four shelters were a million dollars. And it's done and paid for, for the glory of God. And when you bless Israel, God blesses you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could imagine. Oh, and I got great news. This week, our team went and visited in Greensboro, North Carolina, with the Stork people and our bus is under construction. There it is. And it, our life is beautiful bus and it will go and minister to women and take care of women and save babies. How many of you are ready? It'll be ready in four months. It'll be on the road in Georgia. That's pretty exciting. And last but not least, we will begin our God Behind Bars prison ministry very soon. Uh, in about two months, we have everything that we need to have a campus there in, this, in the federal penitentiary where we can go in with our teams and minister the gospel live. It'll be going live as we stand here into the prisons. Jesus said, when you do it unto the least of these, you do it unto me. Clap your hands and thank God for the opportunities he's given us. That's really, really something. I'm reading today in 2 Kings chapter 3, and I'll begin reading with verse 14. And Elisha said, as the Lord God of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. And he's talking to, to the king of Israel, and then there's the king of Judah because Israel was split and there were two kingdoms. He said, I wouldn't even listen to you and I wouldn't pay you any attention. But because the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, is in this room, I'll entertain your request. And then he says this in verse 15. But now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of, di of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, but this valley will be filled with water for you and your cattle and your animals to drink. I want to preach today on the subject of setting the stage for the supernatural, setting the stage for miracles. I feel led to do this because I do serve a God who still is in the miracle business. The prophet Elisha said, call a musician. Bring me 
a musician, a psalmist, a minstrel, the, old, the, the King James says, which is a, a, someone who is not just a good musician, but they have a heart that knows how to worship and connect with God. Bring him into this room. He didn't just start saying, thus says the Lord. He had to set the stage for what was about to happen. He was about to tell the people they were in the wilderness, they were dying, the, the, the army of Israel, the army of Judah were in trouble. Uh, Jehoshaphat had made a league with jo, jo, uh, Joram, and he was the son, Jehoram, he was the son of Jezebel and Ahab. He was a wicked, wicked man, and Jehoshaphat was a good man, but he had a weakness. He, he, he got linked up to the wrong people. You know, you can be a good person, but if you get linked up to the wrong people, it's a matter of time before their battle becomes your battle. And they were out in the wilderness, and they were dying, and they said, is there not anyone who has a word from God that can tell us what to do? And they sent for Elisha on the way on the way there, when he arrived, something happened. But when he arrived, he is so disturbed to see the wicked king of Israel in league with a mighty man of God, Jehoshaphat. He was angry, and he says these words, and you just read it. If it were not for the king of Judah, which means praise, if praise was not in this room, I would not help you. I would let you call on your gods of gold and silver and, and immorality and everything else. But because praise is in the room, I will receive a word from the Lord for you. And then he did something strange. He didn't just begin to do it. But he called, he said, call me a musician. Call me a singer, a worshiper, a harp player would have been what it was and let him play, listen, and set the stage for a miracle. Many of you have never experienced the power of God like God wants to show you because you don't understand there's something we must do. Here's why it matters. He said, I want a harp player. I want the man to come in and change the atmosphere. I want my emotions because music touches your emotions. Our emotions affect our faith. And when you, when you bring in that music, he said, I'm setting the stage for the supernatural. But I can't just do it. The atmosphere, there's an atmosphere for miracles. There's an atmosphere for, for, for God to move. And you have to set the stage. Music creates a mood for miracles. Music has the ability in 2 Kings chapter 3 when the musician came in and started playing, the very next verse said, and as he played and as he was worshiping, suddenly the Spirit of the Lord comes on the prophet and he says, thus says the Lord, dig ditches in the middle of the desert because what God's about to send is bigger than what you have the capacity to receive. Dig ditches. Don't, don't, just, don't just get canteens and hope they get filled. You need ditches for what is about to come. And I want you to get ready for it. But that word didn't come until the stage was set for the miracle through praise, through worship, through something that people, that a man did is why the miracle happened because God inhabits the praise of his people. Here's the, here's the real story behind the story. In the previous chapter, there's one of the most amazing stories in the Bible. I've never preached on it, but I'm going to. I've got a sermon that I'm going to preach on. And it's the story of the prophet Elisha. He was on his way to the place where he would call for the musician. But along the journey, there were some teenagers, some young people, uh, the youth, some of the youth. I know they were teenagers because uh, I'm glad that it wasn't children. Now, the King James said ch children, little children, and this is a bad story, and I wish they wouldn't put it up because I don't want you to put it up yet, but because but, but, they just stole my thunder, but, but this is a bad, 
this is a bad story because the King James says little children were making fun of the prophet, saying, go up, baldy, go up, baldy. He was bald-headed. The prophet was bald-headed. And they said, and what they were saying was, why can't you do like Elijah did when he went up in a fiery chariot? If you're really a prophet, go up. They were making fun. It was not children. It was teenagers. I'm convinced of that. And, 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 and this is hard to explain. I mean, I don't understand all this stuff, but the Bible said that when those children and those teenagers started mocking the prophet and making fun of him, that it offended God in heaven, and God sent two she-bears. You can put it up if you want to. God sent two she-bears. They were not he-bears. Why she-bears? Because she-bears are meaner than he-bears. That's why. And the she-bears ate the children, ate up 42 of the teenagers. How many of you would rather the bears eat teenagers than children? Amen. Any day. How many of you have got a few teenagers you'd like for some she-bears to at least chase a little while? I, I know the feeling. But watch this. So, so now think about this. We just read this stuff. He's on his way. That happens. He had nothing to do with it. But he sees this horrible slaughter of young people, bears ripping them to pieces. The, the Bible did say, touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. So they had broken the law of God and instant judgment hit their life. And he heard the screams. He's messed up. His mood is messed up. And then he walks into the room. He comes immediately from that episode and he walks into the room and he sees Jehoshaphat, a godly man who has made a covenant with a wicked man that his battles would be their battles. And, and, and he's so upset and that's why he's kind of got an attitude and he says, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't even mess with you. You could perish. I don't care. His mood was messed up. And the reason he called for a musician is he knew I'm carrying so much stuff from where I, what I've been through and where I came from that if I don't change the atmosphere and if I don't change the mood and the way to do that is to bring me a musician and let him worship and let him change and just clear my mind and clear my spirit and set the stage for the miraculous. I'm too upset. My mood is wrong. But when he got the atmosphere and the mood right, that's the power of music. It has the, bring me not a jam session player. I'm not interested in his riffs. I'm not interested in that. I want somebody who can play and just with the chords that they're hitting, they shift my spirit, my mood shifts. And there's a mood, uh, there's an atmosphere that God looks for, for miracles. There's a wooing of the Holy Spirit. At that point, suddenly, there is the setting of the stage for the miracle. It's a Bible principle. If, if you get in the right mood, your faith goes up. Your faith is affected by your mood. And when your mood is shifted and when you get in a worship atmosphere, and when you begin to worship, not watch people, not pay people to worship, not sit out there and say they're doing good, but when you begin to get into that kind of worship, then suddenly you are setting, nobody can do it for you. You are setting the stage for God to say, thus saith the Lord, here's what I'm going to do. But many believers, they're born again, they love God, but they think that praise is not for them. It's unimportant. It's okay. It's entertainment. No, it's not. It sets the stage for the supernatural. And for you to not do it means somebody may get something behind you and around you that you don't ever receive. It's a Bible principle. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, the Bible said that evil spirits would torment King Saul. He was so tormented with evil spirits, distressing spirits tormented him. Demon spirits of fear and depression caused his moods to swing. And one moment he was loving, and the next moment he was throwing spears and violent and angry. Demon powers had complete control of his moods and his emotions. And one of the servants said, listen, why don't we send, in verse 16, uh, he said, why don't we 
sin, there's a, there's a young kid out on the mountaintops. His name is David, and he watches his father's sheep. But listen to the wording. Seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp, and it shall be that when he plays with his hand, the distressing spirits that are upon him will be well and he will be refreshed. The King James says the demons will, de will depart and he will be refreshed. He said, I've seen a man skillful in playing. He's skillful. He's, he's a cunning player of the harp. And when David came into the palace, when the evil spirits were tormenting Saul, and he would be sitting on the throne, and everybody knew the atmosphere was one of tents, and he's, he's in one of those moods. He's in one of the, the demons are taking over, the fear, the depression. He's hitting a low like you wouldn't believe. And in would come the worshiper, David. And when he would play, it would break the spell of demonic powers and they would have to leave in the presence of anointed worship. It's really something. It's really powerful. When I, when I was in college, I got a hold of that verse. It's very special to me. And I was majoring in music on the saxophone. And at that time, I had not felt the call to preach. Although it had messed with me, I would not accepted the call to preach. And I thought my life would go in the direction of music. And I wanted to be a performer, and I wanted to play the horn professionally. And I read that scripture one day with a skillful, skillful. We, we're going to find Jesse, the son of Jesse's son, David, and he plays skillfully, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, especially this part, a handsome person. Come on, call the things that are not as though they were. A handsome person. I wonder why God put that in there. And the Lord is with him. That's, that was the description of David. That's why it's so powerful when someone anointed begins to worship skillfully. And when the Lord is with them, listen, it has the power to shift the mood. From doubt and unbelief and fear and worry and depression and grief and sorrow, suddenly the mood shifts and the king of kings is in the room and your hands go up and tears are flowing down your face because you realize he's king. There's nothing greater than him. There's nothing troubling me that he can't fix and he can't deal with. So powerful is this kind of worship. The power of setting the mood for miracles is so powerful that in Psalms 33, it says, praise the Lord with the heart. Praise him with the instrument of 10 strings. There is no 10 stringed instrument. In music history, I couldn't find a 10 stringed instrument. The 10 strings, I believe, are your 10 fingers. Clap your hands, Psalms 47 said, and create a setting for the miraculous. You create, you set the stage for the miraculous. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Here it is again. Play skillfully with a loud voice. God said, sometimes I don't want you quiet like a church mouse. I want you to praise me with a loud voice. And I just want us to remember something about this church. This church, this church has always had a spirit of praise on it. Before I was ever the pastor, I remember when the former pastor, Pastor Welburn, invited me to preach a revival, and I pulled up for the first time over on Brownsbridge Road and went in that church, and immediately one thing stood out to me about Free Chapel. They have a spirit of praise. The little choir called David's Little Choir. They called it Little David's Choir. They began to sing and the musicians began to play and suddenly the presence of the Lord would fill that, that auditorium. And you know why? Because this church has always had a spirit of praise. And I welcome everybody. I know most of you, the majority of you were not around then and this is new but we must, listen, this thing was born in the fire and we can't live with smoke the rest of 
of our life. We've got to maintain a spirit of praise in this house, not professional praise, but people in the pews, people in the seats who are unashamed, and sometimes we need to get loud, and sometimes we need to get messy, and sometimes we need to dance, and sometimes we need to shout, and sometimes somebody in the balcony needs to get loud. I don't care anymore. I don't care what people think. I don't care what religion says. He's worthy of our praise, and we can set the stage for the miraculous when we praise him. Everybody take a praise break. Hallelujah. With a loud voice. Sometimes you need to get noisy for God. Hallelujah. The mood changes when you begin to focus on the one who can change things. Get it off of you. Get it off of your problems. Get it off of your depression, your loneliness, your setbacks, and get it on Jesus. He's the healer of cancer. He's the healer of broken homes. He can set you free from alcohol, drugs, a life of failure. Praise him. Set the stage for a miracle. No wonder the Lord said, call the church to days of, uh, of, of doing nothing, a service of doing nothing but praising and praying. And I'll show up. You know, even the devil knows that the spirit world is activated through music. I'll give you Bible proof for that. Daniel chapter 3 Nebuchadnezzar used music to set the stage for the demonic. The Bible said that he said, It shall be that when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, the psaltery, the symphony of all kinds of music. See, the devil's got his music. He was the anointed cherub. A cherub is a singing, ministering angel. He was heaven's worship leader. And that's why the music of the world is so powerful. That's why the music of the world has such a draw, and, I, I, and, and not all of it is demonic, uh, not all of it is wrong, by no means, but much of it is. When it's full of pornography, profanity, filth, and, and lust, and immorality, it is not feeding your spirit, and it's hard to pull up in the parking lot after you've listened to that. Your ears are not supposed to be trash cans. It's hard when you walk in here. You still got the mood of the world all over you. You've been listening to filth. You've been listening to uncleanness. You've been listening. You have not set the stage for the miraculous, and it takes moments like this when a preacher gets gets up and he's under the anointing and you can fight me all you want to fight me but I paid a price for this anointing and the devil can't have you but so long God is going to visit our families God is going to save our children and our children's children mm. And if they won't set the stage for it, we can do it. I can do it. You can do it, granddaddy. You can do it, mom. You can do it. Everybody praise the Lord. Come on. I want 500 of you to get up on your feet and shout for a minute. Oh, we bless you, Lord. You feel that? You feel the mood change. You feel the atmosphere of faith come. You can't make this up. You can't program this. This is the anointing, and it breaks every yoke. Woo. I feel angels up here. I feel like God could do anything. I don't know who's watching me, but you need to hear cancer doesn't have the last word. Jesus said, I am the, I am the death, and I am life, and I am the resurrection. I've conquered it. I've conquered it. Now sit down. Let me finish. Even the world, music is a part of almost everything. They know it sets a mood. You get on an elevator. 
calms you down. You sit in the dentist's office. They want you to just calm down. The sports world today, you're not going to go to a sports event and not find music. They even hire DJs, basically, that when they're in a timeout or the basketball team's over the side, you start hearing, what are they doing? They're shifting the mood. They're getting the people into it. Because they know if they can get the people into it to cheering, that it will be an advantage to their team because their team is fighting resistance. But the people in the stands can become part of the battle on the field when they begin to pray. Oh, you don't hear me. Too many of you have been sitting in the bleachers, no offense, but you've been sitting up there watching when God says, I want you to set the stage for miracles in my house with your own personal prayer. Music sets a mood. Even in the medical field, there's something called musical therapy. You can research it. It's very real. It goes all the way back to Plato and Aristotle. Plato said music is the medicine of the soul. In Greek society, they would prescribe Music, when someone had been wounded or hurt, as part of their medicine. After World War II, doctors brought musicians into the hospitals because scientists did a thorough study and realized that the power of music had the ability to make the body heal faster. They did studies of people that they didn't listen to soothing music and and, and they didn't heal as fast as people. So they started bringing during World War II, they brought in professional musicians who would play and the music would bring the wounds healing faster. When you listen to music, that scientists will tell you that chemicals are released into your body, especially music that soothes you, music that joy brings joy to you, music that connects to some good memory. What it does is it releases something called dopamine. It's the feel-good chemical in your body, the feeling that me and Sharice got when we took those hot donuts and we put them in our mouth. That was dopamine. We, we were like, whoa, this is... Uh. That's what music releases. Endorphins is another thing. There's something called the runner's high. And people who run a marathon, they say it about 20 miles. Turn to somebody and say, you'll never know this feeling. But they say when they hit about 20 miles of running, they they release, your body releases endorphins, which which bring about, what they, they described it as a giddiness, a giddiness. Just an, oh my God, I just feel so alive. And they said the same, uh, the same thing is released through soothing music. Something called the immunical global A, which is a cell that attacks foreign objects in the body. Cortisone, a stress reliever, is released when people listen to me. They've done research after research when they listen to soothing music. It, it releases cortisone, which is a stress reliever. Soothing music. Blood pressure comes down. Heart rate regulated. All through, the moods begin to change. The pressure begins to deflate and stress and all of that. It matters, folks, what I'm trying to say. If secular music can have that kind of effect, what happens when we come together and we get our minds on God and we begin to worship the Lord? It can, do, it can bring an atmosphere that releases the healing power of Jesus Christ. They did a study of people in the morning who, uh, who had a bad mood. The Wharton School of the University in Pennsylvania did a study, and they went to a workplace, an insurance call center. And the people who came in, basically, this is what they said. They said the people who came in in the morning with a bad mood, if they started the day out with a bad mood, even if they had major wins during the day, they would end with a bad mood. But the people who started the day out with a good mood, even if they had a bad day, they would end with a good mood. And then the kicker, they said the people that they, that they did this research on, 
when they listened to good, soothing music, they started their day 10% happier and they were 10% more productive all day long. What I'm interested in is creating the mood, the atmosphere, the setting of the stage for miracles in this church. That when we gather in his name, and we begin to praise and pray even tonight at five o'clock in that service that we're going to have that's all about Jesus. That we would create and set the stage for miracles. I want to throw this in and I'll, I'm going to call for the musicians. They can come. And Bill is my, he is my musician. How long have we been together? Twenty something years. You are getting up there, Bill. <laughs> Just play me some chords. Play whatever you feel. You know, I want to say this to the young people for just a minute. When I talk about setting the stage, one of the most powerful things God ever taught me at a young age, I felt a conviction and I didn't know why. Now I understand it. But I always have felt like even before I was a preacher and I was a musician in the band that my dad, the church that he pastored, something in me, my heart would start turning toward God on Saturday. You don't wait till you walk in and just grab the sticks or grab the guitar and pick it up and start playing. But really the preparation for setting the stage for miracles should happen before we get here. Somewhere on a Saturday, and I know it's one of the most important days, and I want to say to all the preachers and all the preachers' wives and all the staff and to all of the uh, musicians and all of our campuses, this will make a huge difference. At some point, for me, it's earlier in the week that my heart begins to shift toward the house of the Lord and Sunday's coming. But for the musicians and the people that are serving the children's ministry, etc., on a Saturday at some point, I know it's one of the busiest days, but at some point there ought to be a shifting in your spirit. That's why it's hard for me. Sharice knows that Saturday's not a good day for me to hang out, to, to go do this or do that. At some point, my mood has shifted. <laughs> and when that begins to happen to you, that's the Spirit wooing you. Saying, set the stage and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Set the stage and I, 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 I may just save your son or your daughter tomorrow. Set the stage and I'll show up in church tomorrow. You set the stage. You don't just walk in here and say, go at it, guys. Good luck. You don't stay up one, two, three o'clock in the morning on a consistent basis if you're in ministry or any kind of thing that you're trying to do for the Lord. You give him the prep time necessary to shift your soul and your spirit. You don't just watch anything on a Saturday night. Whew. Well, I don't know where that came from, but I think it came from the Lord. You need to shift your, I just don't get much out of church because you don't put nothing in. You're going to get out of this what you put in. I'll say it with a smile. You're going to get out of this exactly what you put in. Prepare your heart. Set the stage for the miraculous. If you know you're going to preach, that's just not another day. Never. Never. When they told me the other week that I was preaching for the college, and it's, you know, 150 kids or something, I, I'm not just saying this, but my spirit shifts. I've got to go be alone. I've got to get with the Lord. I've got to pray. I've got, I can't just do this for a big crowd. It doesn't matter where I am. If I'm going to get up and say, I spoke this week to 30, 
35 pastors at a, at a retreat. 35 pastors. And honestly, the Lord, the whole time, I couldn't hardly enjoy all that I was doing with my son Drake and all of that. I couldn't enjoy it because I was hunting. That's what I didn't want to tell you politically correct. But we were hunting. And I enjoyed it. But at some point, I had to hand him the gun. And I had to go get with the Lord. So what I'm saying to you is this stuff matters. What we're doing tonight matters. Prepare yourself for the presence of God. I can't let my emotions rule. Bring me a musician. All over this room, you have a choice now. You can set the stage for miracles in your life and in your home. Or you can just keep doing what you've been doing. This is going to be a powerful year. We got one more year. The Lord said, give me one year. And one of those things includes praise and worship. I want you to stand up on your feet. And I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, one God, two God, three God, glory to God. I don't care what you are. I want you to lift up your hands all over this room. You've done it at every other event that you've been to. When they ask you to, let a preacher lead you into the presence of God. Open your mouth and begin to close your eyes and speak praise to your Savior. Set the stage for the miraculous. Set the stage for His presence. Set the stage with your own individual praise. If you're not saved, if you know you're lost, just keep your hands up and just say, Lord, wash me in the blood. Apply the blood to my sins and wash me and make me a worshiper. Today, wash me and I'll worship. Wash me and I'll worship. Oh God, cleanse me. Get all the stuff, the bear attacks. Get it all out of my mind. Things that have distracted me this week. I need your presence. It's been so long. I long for your presence. Oh God, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than live in the palace with the wicked. I'm coming after you today, Lord. That's why I want him to sing this song that commands your soul. So don't you get down me lift up your song cause you got a lion inside of those lungs to get up and praise the Lord your emotions. Your soul is your soul. emotions. Come on, my soul. Don't, Don't you get shy of me. Lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those lungs to get up and praise the Lord. So come on, my soul. Worship him at every camp. Come on, my soul. Worship him in creation. Set the stage for the miraculous. God can heal. God can set free. God can change hearts and lives. God can restore marriages. Just begin to create the stage for the miraculous. Come on, my soul. Come on, soul. Bless the Lord, all my emotions. You got a lion. Come on, my 
knows what you need. You've been down. Command your soul to praise Him. Let the mood shift into an atmosphere. closing I wonder if I could get several hundred young people to get out of your seat and come down and say I'll be a worshiper in my generation I'll be unashamed I feel like David felt you know his his wife got upset with him because he was dancing before the Lord with all of his might and I'm gonna just put it like I want to put it he looked up and he said honey Sweetheart, I'm sorry that you don't like my dancing and my jumping and my leaping and my shouting. But I wasn't dancing for you. I was dancing for, for the one who brought me from the pasture to the palace. The one who gave me the head of Goliath. The one who gave me the bare skin and the bare rug in the dining room. He deserves a mighty praise an unchained praise. Throw your hands up. Say, come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy of me. Lift up your song. It's going to take you some radicals. It's going to take some people who catch on fire. It's going to take some young people who don't care and are not ashamed. and pray
just noticed, I just noticed while I'm standing up here, I look down in this grill. There's a grill right here. And my wife, after we were anointed with oil like you were last Sunday and hands laid on us, and she had two pictures of needs in our family. And we anointed those two pictures with oil. And I didn't tell her to do it. She didn't ask my permission. She folded them up and she slipped them down in the grill. And now I guess every time I preach, and every time y'all sing, we're setting the stage for the miracle. your hands the Lord is here the Lord is here the Lord is here praise him praise him let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord praise him So we're not going to dismiss this service. We're going, to, we're going to end worshiping. Raise your hand and receive the blessing. And all of you that can and will, you know, you got as much of God as you want. You got as much as you want. If you want more, then you go for more. We're going to go for more at 5 o'clock. And all of you that can be with us, join our campuses. Let's worship the Lord. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you. And may he give you peace. And may he give you a spirit of praise. In Jesus' mighty name. We'll see you at 5 o'clock. We'll begin right at 5. Don't miss it. It's going to be glorious. Believe in God for the word of prophecy, for miracles, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. Whatever God wants to do, healing, signs and wonders, he's able if we create the right atmosphere. One more time, sing it as they leave. I love that. I love that sometimes you have to command your soul, your emotions to get in line. Chapel family, it is such a great reminder today that we celebrate from a place of victory. We celebrate from a place of praise, not because what we have done, but because of trusting in the work of Jesus. He took care of death, hell, sin in the grave. And so today, our call is to trust in the work of Jesus. This service was so amazing, yeah. but we want to invite you today. You made the choice to be saved to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We want to say congratulations. We also want to invite you to text the word YES to 510-510 just so that we can get personally connected with you and get you some next steps on your journey. But also, if any of you out there need prayer for anything, we invite you to text the word PRAYER to 510-510 so that our team can come alongside you believing for miracles, believing for healing. Whatever it is you need, we're praying right alongside with you at PRAYER to 510-510. And it is such an honor for our staff to partner in prayer with you. Um, also, 
I want to thank those of you that are generous givers. Man, we want to thank you so much for your generosity. You know, just a few moments ago, Pastor mentioned uh, what's going on in Israel. Uh, he mentioned the stork buses that are coming online. He mentioned God behind bars going into the state penitentiaries in Georgia. I mean, God is doing amazing things. And when you see those things and you're a giver, know that you are a part of that. Also, before we go, I want to invite you back here 5 p.m. tonight for praise and worship. And also, you may want to run to the pantry, grab some crackers and juice, because we will be having communion tonight. Yes, well, before we continue on the day, let's pray and continue on. But Lord, I thank you so much for our online community. I thank you, God, they're taking time out of their Sunday to honor you with your time and with your space, Jesus. I pray, Father, that your love would be so abundant to them, God. I pray they take this word and remember it throughout their week and apply it throughout their week. And I pray, Father, they'd feel your love covering them every single place they go. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Father. We honor you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. We'll see you next week.